So I got it on. This, is, this looks nice. I just had to come up with a way to press it, so pop the hole through my table. My bolt. So I got to clean that out really nice. But it's good. Back in business. I like press. I don't have a press. The other one tapped right in. This one didn't. I bought a new one. Seems to be going in now. I got a hole through my table. I made a square wash around. And there I am. All right, so this is the work. So that lets me do all the stuff up top. It goes higher. I don't know. I uh, got it on Amazon, and I really like it. Um, I got this, I think, on Amazon or Eastwood. Eastwood. It's perfect. Same thing, too. Brings everything up. A little chair. It's time to take all, all this right, stuff so off. I got all the wheels off. It's on jacks. I want to take just everything off right now, on the front at least. Uh, but I gotta unplug the brakes, so I'm gonna suck all the extra brake fluid out and then unplug it and then put tape some water bottles on there. That way it can steep into it on the ground. So, turkey baster. I'm squirting in this thing, I'm drinking it because why not? Alright, so I just got everything out, all the old stuff is here. Uh, I didn't do too much video on taking everything out because, you know, there's other people that have done it. Um, so, well, these are, I'm just showing you the steps that I'm doing so I can, you know, make my way through it. it didn't take me too long. It took me like three, four hours. Everything's out. So, uh, tomorrow I'm going to read over the instructions and then get a little bit more familiar with it at work. And then, uh. When I get out here, I should start prepping, grinding, getting everything ready to go. So here's my setup. Here are my dogs. That's Apple. That's that's the daughter. That's the mom. That's Pixie. And this is Boris. Hey, Boris. Nobody's seen you in a while. Say hi, Popas. Um, yeah. All right, so I got the number four one. It's kind of long, I was worried about hitting that ball bearing, so I got a grinder, I cut the tip off, then I sanded it down, and I put it in there. I took this to my, um, already pulled the old step power steering rack out, so I took this over there. And what this does is, it's pretty much just like that, but it fits in here. And I made sure that the high pressure line fits in this, so this will be dropping in there. And that's the one we do. All right, so I'm literally like just pulling up because it's not really threaded. It's coming out. All right, so I took it out and it says to make sure that that little ball is not left in the rack. Little one that came in there. That's what I cut that tip off. I was worried that the tip would push the ball out. So I cut this, cut this little lip off. Just so it'll just catch the edge. So there's nothing in there now. I'm going to throw this in there and then throw it in that came off. So that's the bottom one. I already just did the bottom one right now. It's pretty simple. Uh, I did forget to go get my center punch. Just clean this out. Here we go. It's asking for 39.64. I'm going to put some goggles on because this is like super eye level and those bits are pretty like vicious with letting off debris or like metal shavings. So I'm gonna throw these on, that way I don't get anything in my hat. That one's done, ready for this. Using this little bit just to get going on my center punch. You can, I don't know if you can see it on here where it's at, but I can see it, it's right here. Right there somewhere, right there. So I'm gonna start with this one and then I'm gonna drill my hole. We are putting it in like that, this, that, that, that that here it is and then it's got a little space right here but whatever i punched it already I'm trying to set this up learning on youtube so i'm using youtube to post something on youtube and steal it on these clean them so i drilled this one went through the top just like it detailed put that in there put the, that on there so it's flat over here, it's got a little bit of lip. I got to drill out back there what's holding it up from going flat. 
fit, so it's kind of tight. All right, so in the instructions, it said to put, push this through and then just pump the hot punch, like a little hole for the bolt. I punched all the way through it. It's pretty good to focus. So I got two holes. So what I'm gonna do is, there's enough sleeve on here where I'm gonna push it up right there, weld it on the top, and then pass the bead on the bottom because it's supposed to be just pressed up on the bottom side like this with the hole through it. Um, so I'm gonna get weld, it's gonna weld on both sides now and then I'm gonna have the bracket on top. So I'm good with it. I think it's gonna be perfectly fine. And if not a little better. Right there. So what I'm gonna do is take this, come in from the top like that. Oh. just like that hit it drill it and take it down that way i don't have a 90 so that's what's gonna so have to what i ended up using is this did my little punch because that other way didn't work and i'm gonna put that that on here and get going with that too punched it straight through here like this test out Like a pretty good size hole it called for an inch and a quarter i went for an inch and a half um so it looks like it's in a good spot i went for an inch and a half just because i felt like it'd be a little bit like a quarter of an inch on each side will kind of give me what i need and then i won't have to fight it if it doesn't fit so i'm gonna test drive it right now put it back in there Here it is um this is my holes lined up when i put this you guys see in the video i try to make it super straight so my holes lined up perfect i didn't have any problems with the hole matching up uh as far as this and setting it in there i pretty much just try to drill straight hole so on this side right here when i hold it up and you see it's gonna be tight it's gonna be clearing kind of hard to see okay, zoom in perfect hole right there so that's clearanced so i'm gonna tighten it and then get my sector shaft kind of measured out start looking at so that. i put it in there i held it down and I was thinking it doesn't have to modify the sector shaft, but on mine, I'm clearing it. Everything clears on the sector shaft. We'll see when everything's finalized, but as of right now, I'm really excited. I don't have to cut anything, everything fits, and I can go ahead. The next step's gonna be welding this in. So I'm gonna get out the stuff that I need. Actually, I'm gonna cut cut this off, grind it down, and then add my, my other plate that I put my third member to. So I'm gonna do that right now. I got my welding cart. Hell yeah. Feel it on all this. All right, so here we go. I just get that in there, slid it in. I'll leave that there. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark it with my Sharpie. Everywhere I gotta grind, grind, uh, grind, grind. Over here, sorry. Grind, grind. That way I can burn it in right there. All right, so here I am again. I'm gonna do the gussets. I decided to do them with the arm on or with the lower control arm on, and then I'm gonna weld them up like that. The reason why I decided to do it like that is because I really wanna make sure that none of this moves and this is gonna hold it in place. And Boris, what's wrong? You have something on your foot? Come here. Here, Boris. So yeah, well, I'm gonna get everything ready, make some marks, I'm gonna hold them all up, make some marks on what I, where I gotta grind out, grind it all out and make it happen. All right, cool, so I got it all done. All these are in already. Uh, I think they're, I think they're all right, I think they'll hold. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill for this bump stop. And then I think that'll be probably tomorrow. Then I'm gonna assemble everything. The front's gonna be done. Then I'll move on to the back. All right, so here are my first welds. And then this side, I started getting a little bit better. And then this side, I'm starting to get better. Look, check it out, see? Ooh. Yeah. You get all that cleaned up. So, and like I said, I'm just gonna, I already marked it out what spots I need to get down everywhere it's going to touch so yeah i'm just hitting this i hit it with the grinder now i'm hitting these spots with the wire wheel because the bristles will get in there a little bit better 
and I marked everything so I can just grind the spots that are going to get welded and uh, yeah just making my way through it I'm using a wire wheel an assortment of wire wheel brushes and then this one right here Jack holding everything up it's just it's helping out with everything everything bolted on I put this one up here I got the spindle on which I already showed you how I prepped I just put the shims in here shims in the top so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in there I'm gonna slide this in then get my tie rod on and here's how I'm gonna do it just push it it's just me so you guys don't have to imagine it this is a pain in the ass to put on still kind of loose I gotta find a way I might have to put an access hole at the top so I can tighten it from the top because I can't get anything back there to tighten it because the existing nut with this welded on back here is in the way I just put this on here and uh, torqued it down to get it right. Put this on here like that at a 90, torqued it down to 108 foot pounds. I turned the steering rack so the shaft would come out because it's too close on the frame. So I'm gonna slide the boot over it and reassemble. Slide the boot over, get everything on, turn it back in, zip tight down. Okay, so here we are, everything's pretty much in already. Um, I put these on and welded them. They do have quite a bit of stretch in them, so I do anticipate having to suck that up quite a bit. That sounded gay. Um, everything turns now. So we'll let that settle in all night. Nothing's torqued yet. I still have to, uh, I'm gonna get some longer bolts for these brackets to get this side. It's like some other stuff I did. Um, everything seems to, to work the big brake kit clears everything clears on the big brake kit um so it, it does fit on this i was kind of concerned about making that i noticed that i do have a little bit of tire rub on this corner right right here um so i'm gonna check it when i get all my tires mounted and probably just take take the tip off of this right here uh but we'll see we'll see if it, there's a difference between it, it like touching and then it like pressing on it so i gotta Turn it all the way and see how it looks. This side clears. Uh, as far as the up travel, I'm going to have to extend this. I'm going to take out about an inch of travel on the up travel so that I don't tear into all the plumbing for uh, my snorkel. And then on the other side, it's going to help me out because I'm not going to dip into the battery tray. And also with that, um, I'm able to leave quite a bit of the structure here. So I'm going to get everything finalized, finish the whole truck, drive it around, see how it performs. And then what I did is the way I cut this, I'll show you on the other side. I just put a seam. I just cut it right here, cut it down, cut it so I can bring it up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hammer this into this and just start tacking it all in just to build it back up a little bit. Hammer this to this, build it back up and then patch it up. So that's my plan for that. This, all this stuff right here, it's just normal stuff. I'm gonna trim out, out of the way. And uh, I hope, so far, I mean, I gotta still do the brake fluid. I still gotta put power steering fluid in it. I gotta put my battery back in, find a solution for my, um, for my reservoir, for my power, uh, for my washer fluid. And the size tires that I got are the 39 inch BFG Goodrich. Those 39s, they run at a 38 and a half. Uh, so, you know, it's a little bit bigger than a 37. I don't think I would have run into, I think I would have kind of been at about the same spot with the 37. Uh, you know, what's three quarters of an inch? Cause the 30, you know, or what's one inch? You know, one inch is, I mean, it's quite a bit, but I mean, hell, it's one inch. Might as well just go for 39s. The reason why I went with 39s instead of 37s is because BFG does the 37, which is really like a 36 and a half, half inch. So you're looking at like, I don't know, a couple thousand miles, you'll be on 35.9, you know, eight. And there's no way I'm gonna spend the kind of money to have this truck looking like this on anything in the 35 range for measurements so i got the 38 so kind of wear down to like a 37.9 37.8 probably at the end of their lifespan 37.5 and 
that's exactly what I wanted. It's just to sit into the 37. I wanted to stick with the BFG Goodriches because they are an awesome tire. You get no rumble in the power in the steering. They're super adequate for the uh, super super good in the snow. Very adequate for for mud, and really do really well in the sand. So I think that like they're the best tire, and they sell them in that huge size. Um, they don't sell them with white letters, so I'm using tire sticker to put white letters. I like the white letters out because when I grew up, and my dad's friends would come over in their trucks back in the 90s and they all had white letters out and big truck white letters out that's my thing i like it so i'm gonna stick with it so i'll just keep trucking along tomorrow um i do have born free to go to so after that well, my main solution is finding a solution and go ahead and bring that down an inch so so yeah this is what it looks like doing this to clear my wheel brake sensor what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna half moon it i think that'll be the best structural to retain the the best structure to retain the integrity of this so this is what i'm doing to do it i'm just putting it on my porter van just cutting it out so there you go oh, let me see if i focus okay So if I ever want to change that, I'm going to have to take my brakes off. That's okay. All fits though. Super annoying, but it's there. Okay, so <clears throat> the brake lines that they gave me for the, the kit, for the RCLT kit, they don't work. But these do. I haven't checked travel with them now. So they fit right there. I did run into another issue with them communicating with one another. Is that this one's slotted. Right here. And this diameter, this larger lip where the clip's supposed to go. It's too, it doesn't fit. This is a round hole. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that down with my step bit in order for it to fit. So I got it in. Uh, I'm gonna check the clearance right now. I might hit this nip, this lip right here. So the way I got this in, I reamed it out. And then if you look at this tab that came with the kit, it's pretty thick, right above my nail. And the OEM ones are a little bit thinner. So I used the OEM one and it's in there it's not coming out so i'm gonna go ahead and cycle the suspension just to at least is you know about where it's the longest and see how it how it does and then i'm also going to turn it right here to make sure that this clears i don't think this is going to clear uh, we'll see where it stops and then i might just take a notch out make a mark take a notch out and then call it good if i notch it too much to get a hole i'll just burn it in and seal up the hole but i think i think i might have to do a little notch We'll see right now. So I finally notched it out. I want you guys to see. Let me see if I can get it in there. Let's see if I can focus it. Okay. So it clears everything right there. It's fully locked. And I'm going to have to fill that in. So, but that's the clearance I need. So I'm thinking what I can do is just get a little plate behind it and go straight into it. So I'm going to leave that as is. I'm gonna set up the truck. I'm gonna come back and um, get that sealed up when I come do the, the fenders. So what I'm gonna do for now is I'm probably gonna punch a hole down here, just in case water gets in there. It's got a spot to spot to drain, and I'm just paint it up. I made half inch mark increments. I want to keep this body line if I can. If I do end up trimming the whole thing and not just scalloping what's touching. And I want to keep that so it stays true to the whole fender so it still looks like but just tighter. So this is what I'm doing to do that. Just coming across, coming across, coming around and making my way down. And I'm going to do a few of those and then I'm going to scallop it and then see where it ends up. See what's tighter and follow it from there went a little more than an inch and a half and went like two inches and I just rode the tire and made that mark so now I got an idea of what fender I'm gonna have left that's gonna be full compression on the up and then I'll go ahead and turn it 
I'm sure the edges are gonna wanna take some of this else out. Like for instance, this right here, I gotta mark all this and I'm gonna have to scallop that too. I have about an inch and a half of up travel. So now that I got my marks right there for my sizes, what I'm gonna do is set this at an inch and a half and ride the tire and cut that out. I'm gonna do two inches, it's an inch and a half. So I'll do like an inch and a quarter and then cut that out and cut the back out. And that should be this top side right there. And then I'll turn the wheels and see how it looks. So I'm gonna do a little pass from the outside, Let's see how it works. But I'm gonna have to do the full pass from the inside to get it above this a little bit. All right, so that, that's where I'm at for up travel. I'm gonna stick with that and then I'm gonna bump it out. I'm gonna drop the bump about half inch. And then I'm gonna work on the turning. I don't want it to go any higher than that because on, on the other side, it might hit my battery. Any better? This on. That's where everything kind of binds up. So I'm holding it on fully open right now, and then I'm gonna bring it, or that's actually where it should be. So they say you lose about an inch. So as soon as I'm done welding this, hopefully all the slack and everything I can pull out. Uh, the strap looks a little shorter than. I imagine the normal one said it was supposed to be a little higher from the depictions, but whatever, you know, I guess we'll find out how it goes. If not, I'll have to grind it off and re-weld it higher, but we'll see. So yeah, I assembled everything. Um, I did notice that this, that's a little crooked right there, but I don't know if there's a ball joint in there, whatever. And here we go. That's my little set of setup right now. Just making it happen. My first time welding, don't judge me.